Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it is our favorite time of the week because we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, we're starting things off this week with our latest exclusive. You saw this launch earlier this week, continuing our train of 3V Demco 8020.5s now available with the carbon fiber handle. Smooth carbon fiber, as you can see, 3V blades, as you can probably also see from this angle, and the, uh, the standard stone washed finish on these. Very, very cool. These have, as you can see as well, the big pivot of the uh, full factory titanium versions, as opposed to the, uh, the smaller pivot of the Grivery versions. So that has a nice, cool look to it. And they turned out really nice. I gotta say, like, especially the, this shark's foot version, for some reason, it's really appealing to me. The clip point is, has been kind of my blade of choice on this particular model since its launch. I, you know, it's just my thing, I guess. But this one, particularly in the shark's foot, is speaking to me. Not sure why. Know, maybe, maybe this can offer some clues. But it looks really cool. It's kind of a blend of, you know, the high tech carbon fiber and kind of a heavier duty looking blade shape than the clip point in fact. Flat grinds on both of them, not super thin, going for a bit of strength with these, which of course is backed up by the strength of Demco's Shark Lock right there named because it looks like the fin. And you've got finger safe operation, you've got fidgety operation, gotta love that. Even if you're not gonna use that, you can use the thumb studs or do the middle finger flick, that sort of thing. I found easiest way to close it though is just to hit the lock and let it drop. You know, there's stuff like the axis lock, there's ways to do it a little more deliberately. And yeah, you can do it with this, but it feels kind of unnatural, I gotta say. It's all about letting, letting the drop happen. Stone washed pocket clip. There is a second pocket clip in the package for the left side, which makes this in conjunction with the lock and the opening thumb studs there a completely ambidextrous knife. Very cool for lefties or righties. Cool thing right now, if you've been you know, waiting for just the right version of this knife, you wanted the upgraded steel and you wanted upgraded handles, but maybe the titanium was too expensive for you, 265 for these, over $100 less than the, uh, the textured titanium and I think the, uh, the standard smooth titanium even. Uh, maybe that was like 350, maybe not quite $100 less than the, uh, the smooth titanium, but still a very significant drop between the two. Also available right here, only from Knife Center, and according to the Demcos, it's probably gonna be a long time before they do any carbon fiber again, because uh, the factory they've been working with isn't a fan of working with the material. It causes some, uh, some issues for them, so keep that in mind as well. Next up, an exclusive restock. These have been out uh, of stock for a while. We just recently got a new batch in, the Revo Ness, one of my favorite affordable folding knives because it's an awesome Nesmuk shape, of course, in our Knife Center exclusive Natural Micarta with the stonewashed D2 blade. Very affordable knife, 6650 for these right here. And you're getting a heck of a knife for that. The blade is about 3.6 inches long. You've got that long, graceful shape, sweeping, slicing profile, full flat grind. It's gonna be nice and efficient. Micarta handle scales, reversible deep carry pocket clip on these, ball bearings in the pivot, and the liner lock. It's just such a cool knife. It folds up fairly compact for such a, a broad, sweeping design. It's not super thin, but not going to be a problem to carry either. And then the flip just works so, so well. Holds in the hand great, despite the Nesmuk being like a hunting knife pattern, as an EDC option, especially if you need any kind of big, longer cuts. This has always been fantastic. And I love it. And I'm glad to see them back in stock right now. All right, next up is sort of the, also kind of like the previous knife, a little bit of a return, not technically a restock, but is the Kershaw Dividend, a premium version. Used to be able to get this knife with M390 steel for less than a hundred bucks. It's been out of stock for a while and we've been waiting for it to come back and it has, but with a twist. Instead of M390, 
which is a, uh, a, a, an European steel. This is made with 20 CV, an American steel, which is made by a different company, but it's the same formula. It's the same high performance, the same qualities. And the price now, still under a hundred bucks, $96, just under that, a uh, few cents under. Fantastic value for what you're getting here. You're getting that premium steel, the whole knife, not just the steel is made in America. Three inch blade, very thin, very acute, very slicey, very precise has been the way to describe this blade. And actually this hold right here speaks to why it has that precision in a way. You know, you can certainly, you know, just grip the knife standard style, but something about this makes me want to put it in my hands, nestling the back in my, the meat of my palm right there and index finger on the spine puts the tip out very, very precision for your, for your cutting tasks right there. And the geometry just works. That grind is flat. It's very high. You've got that big swedge going on all about efficiency. The handle themselves, handles themselves are kept nice and thin too. This is a very easy knife to carry milled aluminum. And that's a difference between uh, the previous M390 version, which is a few bucks less than this, but not a whole lot. This one has more interesting handles. The, uh, the old version was just standard flat black aluminum. Now we've got something interesting going on there without kind of sacrificing what made that one special either. We do have a flipper. We've got a spring assist mechanism, nice and snappy. We have a deep carry pocket clip as well that is reversible for either side. With as thin as this is and as pocketable and deep carryable as this is, just a great EDC option if you just need a pocket knife. You don't need something overbuilt or tactical. You want something made in America with premium materials. You don't want to spend an arm and a leg. Check this knife out. All right, next up we have the Riot Gents number no. nine. Comes in about 327, 3.3 3 inch M390 blade, titanium frame lock, but it goes a little deeper than that. I first saw this knife, I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. The more I looked at this, I didn't know, I couldn't quite put my finger on why. I was like, what am I missing here? Super clean presentation. If you're the type of person who doesn't like a lot of extra screws, on the handle of your pocket knife, there are no extra screws showing on the handle of this pocket knife. There's just the pivot screw, which is necessary. There's nothing extra after that. Check that out. No, uh, no screws for attachment, even no screws visible for the milled pocket clip on the back. The way they do this is with this little backspacer piece right here, this little circle, see it has these little holes indented into it. This is threaded and they even give you a little wrench so you can take in the package so you can take this apart and clean it if you need to. Tightening that down pulls the scale the, or the handles together and fastens it that way. Very, very cool indeed. Nice and clean, nothing that's gonna like jab you or anything like that. And just visually extremely appealing. Gotta like it. We do have a little bit of embellishment with the cutouts there, but I guess they had to give it, wanted to give it a little something. The nice thing about those though, is it does give you a little bit of uh, traction, almost like a thumb pad there, if you're gonna use this in a pinch grip, which I think is very conducive to a pinch grip because of the swooping shape where the blade is kind of upswept a little bit. This is gonna let you get right down onto the surface, use all of that cutting belly on whatever it is you need to slice. Blade itself is hollow ground M390, like I mentioned, a little bit on the thicker side, but nice and crowned as well. Just a super impressive looking piece and super impressively engineered piece as well. I guess you do have two quote unquote extra screws here on the back for the, uh, the what's the word? Insert. The lock bar insert, thank you, Thomas. Um, but they are, like you can't adjust them from the outside. They're nice and subtle. It's, it almost looks like a, like an embellishment rather than, oh, here's the screw, you know? So that's pretty cool. Ball bearings in the pivot. Why? Yes, of course. And great flipping action as you would expect from a Riyadh. All right, next up, uh, last Friday, we showed you, well, last Thursday, we showed you a couple of the, uh, we and Civivi knives that were dropping last Friday. Now I've got uh, a couple more from that drop. The first is the Wii Starhawk. 
245 for this and it was actually a surprise in, in photos it looks a little bit larger, but it still it still works very much at the size that it is 2.8 inch blade 20 CV stainless steel. It doesn't look like just a three inch blade, it looks a little more powerful. And we'll have to see how that actually uh, bears out in actual use but it's kind of really, really strong look. You've got the belly you need for some nice slicing. You've got a very robust tip as well. This is almost like I'm gonna call this a modified sheep's foot really thanks to that, uh, that drop. It's basically a sheep's foot but with a ton of belly uh, going on, but mostly back towards the heel as it comes out towards the tip. It's a little more a little more straightforward sheep's footy. Well, that's pretty cool. Sheep belly. Sheep belly. Is this as good as pork belly? No. I'd try it. That's right. Yeah. Pork belly is pork belly. Pork belly is pork belly. Oh, now I want some. Uh, well, anyway. Uh, anyway, build uh, titanium handles, titanium frame lock. I like the uh, the subtle milling going on there. I like the back spacer too. It has this kind of chunky look, matches up with the other kind of chunky nature of the rest of the blade. I take that back. The whole, the knife itself isn't chunky. It just kind of has that aesthetic. I mean, check out the the thickness of that blade. It's going to be a fairly efficient cutter overall. It's not overbuilt feeling, but you've got that chunkiness kind of built into the backspacer here, along with that really cool lanyard point at the back. Really digging that. Milled titanium pocket clip, lock bar insert on the frame lock, of course, ball bearings in the pivot. You're not really going to be using that fuller so much for opening. You can actually pinch it here but it's it's not going to be it's not going to give you the reverse flick. See, yeah. we all know I'm bad at that anyway. So grain of salt, but it's kind of at the wrong spot to really effectively do that reverse flick. More subtle thumb opening though, no problem. Ball bearings, flipper though, that is going to be the bread and butter right there. A couple different handle uh, color variations available as well if you're not a fan of the gray stone washed. All right, this next knife is the Civivi P87. Uh, and this one really does actually feel like it was originally a larger knife and got scaled down. Either that or it was designed for uh, people with very slim fingers overall. Price on this is uh, about $70. You've got a nitro V blade, three inches, modified Warncliffe shape going on. Hey. We could call that a reverse Tonto if you insist. It's even got a recurve on, anyway whatever you want to call it. It's a very cool blade shape. And actually the whole knife uh, has a very graceful or a lot of uh, graceful lines to it. As for these finger grooves right here, for me, this is a, a three finger knife. And as you can see, they just they don't line up with my uh, my big fingers at all. I do have very large, you know, larger than average fingers anyway, though. But it still feels decent. But I don't know, I, I can't help but feel maybe that could have been widened out a little bit. But as with everything, take things with a grain of salt. If you've got smaller hands or smaller fingers, this might actually be fantastic for you. Purple G10 on this one, several different colors, as is typical from Civivi, are available. We've got a reversible deep carry pocket clip, a liner lock and ball bearings, and two opening methods. You've got your thumb studs, which work great, of course, and you've got your flipper, which also works great. It's gonna be a really cool small utility knife. Like the Riot we looked at before, it's got a similar kind of downturn handle upswept blade thing going on, which is going to give you some good knuckle clearance for work on a cutting board. It's not necessarily a food prep knife, I would say, but any kind of surface scoring or project work where you're cutting on something that's going to give you a, uh, a nice advantage in using this particular knife. All right, next up, we have the Civivi Terax. Uh, this is a three and a half inch nitro V bladed knife and this one comes in about 105. What we have here is a stainless steel frame lock with G10 inlays on both sides. As mentioned, different colors are available. The black stainless steel with the burgundy G10 that I thought looked especially cool. Feels good in hand, plenty of length for my slightly larger than average hands. Deep carry pocket clip. One of the few uh, non liner locking uh, Civivi's actually this is of course a frame lock as mentioned. And I love the blade here three and a half inches as mentioned drop point high flat grind and the swedge. 
you know, drop points have been done for, for eons because they just work. And they look good too, I think. They still excite me anyway. Plenty of length and utility with this. Very good steel. That Nitro V is good stuff. Takes a very nice edge. It's good and tough for a traditionally made stainless as well. Just an all around great performer. I haven't mentioned how this one flips. One of the nice things about the G10 inlays on the back here is it sort of acts as an over travel stop. You don't have to have a separate insert or a separate piece. And because it's stainless steel and not titanium, you don't need, you know, that insert for the actual locking interface either. In a way, it's kind of a, a bit more elegant than some of the, the more premium knives out there that have to include a, uh, or choose to include a, an insert. But the flipping action, as you would expect, is typical good Civivi quality. Next, we have a new entry into the Boker Tech Tool series. This is the Tech Tool Fork. Because, as you might guess, we have a fork in addition to the main blade. Uh, about $64 for these. We've got a sculpted G10 handle, has a nice con or a nice rounded over radius to it. Good, smooth feel without being overly polished. We have that main blade itself is a Sandvik 12C27. Very tough for a uh, traditionally made stainless. And then of course you've got uh, very fine edge characteristics as well. Full height hollow grind, high polished finish, pocket clip on this slip joint non-locking knife. But then when we get back to that fork, it's a pretty nice little shape. It's, it's decently sized. It could maybe be a little bit uh, shaved down or a little bit you know, pointier at the tip itself for better piercing, but a nice little cocktail fork there. It's not just a cocktail fork, however. I think it's also a tuning fork. Eh? Not sure if uh, what pitch that is tuned to, however, so you might, uh, the practical applications may be a little limited, but it's fun. Uh, that clip on the backside is reversible. I didn't mention that before. You've got a glass breaker on the back as well. Very, some kind of very different choices for a, uh, well, a slip joint, but even the slip joint style multi tools like this, you know, Swiss Army knife style knives, which is this, this is ostensibly a competitor to something a bit different. Always cool to see. Uh, price on this, I don't know if I mentioned uh, about $64 right now. All right, next up, we have a few of these left, at least on the day we're filming this. For the first time, we seem to have caught up on some of the pre orders for the Hogue Deca in Magna Cut, at least on, on one particular part number. Uh, and that is the black injection molded handles with the black modified Warncliffe blade. Is this a, a sign that uh, Hogue is finally catching up with uh, demand a little bit and we'll actually be able to have some on the shelf instead of uh, them all going out to our pre-orders? Perhaps, maybe, maybe not, but uh, it's- Not now that we've publicized it. <laughs> Did you know we take pre-orders and uh, they will be filled in the uh, order they came in at which point you will be charged when orders ship? Just putting that out there. Very cool. I haven't uh, actually been able to hold one of these since SHOT Show earlier this year. I guess I might have held one at Blade Show. No, I don't even think I did. It was a busy day. It was a busy day. We were filming the, the new new stuff at the time of which there were some, some cool things. But yeah, I don't think I've actually put hands on one of these since SHOT Show in January this year. $134 for this black coated blade version, three and a quarter inches long, magna cut steel as mentioned. So not only do you have a stainless steel and a high edge retention steel, it's also a very tough steel. Very cool to see all of those three elements together in high proportions on a powder metal blade right there. Very neat. Compound grinds on this, they're both flat, however, and they're not dramatically different. So it's more for style than actual uh, functional differences there, but the style does look pretty good. Strong utility shape there, but just like the original Deca, the blade is not super thick. You've got a nice thin blade emphasizing the efficiency on your slices and cuts. Black polymer handles, these are based on the uh, Gen 2 version of the Deca, so fewer screws than the original, and you have a deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible too. Very nice. And the weight of this, uh, it finally kind of leans into its, I don't know, shall we say it's raison d'etre as a uh, sort of bug out competitor. Two ounces, uh, we weighed this one. So it's 
0.2 ounces heavier than a standard Benchmade bug out. Very, very nicely done, and it feels a bit stronger, quite honestly. It does have a little tiny bit of flex to the handles, but not quite as much as uh, that Benchmade, if that is a, a concern for you. I know some folks don't like that. Very, very nice. Ambidextrous, you've got their Able Lock, which is tuned perfectly right out of the box. So next up is I think one of the, well, if what you're after is edge retention, that's, that's what you're going for and doesn't necessarily need to be super tough or doesn't need to be super stainless. This is a great and relatively, well, maybe not relatively affordable, but a high value option. The K390 lightweight series from Spyderco. We've now got the uh, Endura sized version in a fully serrated edge, $142 right now. And change like 80 cents or something like that. K390 has awesome, awesome edge retention. Serrations add more edge to your given length. I mean, we're at least doubling the, uh, the edge length on this particular blade because of those serrations, which when you pair it with K390 means this, this is just insane. This is crazy. You <laughs> have an absolute monstrous amount of edge retention right here. It's not going to be as fine a slicer as a plain edge, certainly, but if what you're doing is conducive to being cut with a fully serrated edge, you're going to be hard pressed to find stuff that lasts longer than this until the, uh, the police Four fully serrated K390 version comes out, uh, which if it doesn't exist already, I'm sure, I'm sure it probably does, but if it doesn't, wouldn't be surprised if they uh, do at some point. Fantastic. Not a stainless steel, not super tough, but it's tough enough that I'm, you know, you're not going to have to worry about uh, the points of these kind of chipping off too much unless you're getting like super aggressive on it. Typical uh, lightweight FRN scales. Uh, are they FRN? Yes, they are FRN. Uh, with the bi-directional texturing, which Spyderco is famous for using, which means you've got retention and, you know, positive grip going in pretty much any direction that you were going to hold this knife. Four position pocket clip, mid mounted lock back, spider hole for opening. Works great for just about anyone out there to be able to suit to their carry preferences with all of these things combined. Just fantastic. What do you think, Thomas? I dig it. Even Thomas digs it, ladies and gentlemen. So there you go. Very cool. Uh, and of course, we have other uh, K390 Spider Co's as well, uh, but that is the new one since this is a new knives video. And we also have the Spyderco Upturn, a new knife in their value line, coming in at about 45 bucks and change. And yes, it's a Spyderco, so it's kind of a riff on a familiar shape, but I am really liking the gracefulness of this particular one. Works really well. Blade itself, measured from tip to the handles, is just under three inches. We've got 8CR stainless, full flat grind, kind of stereotypical Spyderco shape, a little bit maybe narrower than some out there, but I think that just adds to the gracefulness as mentioned. And mid-mounted lockback, four position pocket clip, completely ambidextrous knife here with stainless steel handles. And one of the cool things about Spyderco's stainless steel models that they do like this is, yeah, you may see the, uh, the threaded screws for the pocket clips, but there's no other attachment stuff seen or no other screws or pins or anything seen from the outside. It's very, very clean presentation. Great for modders, engravers, that sort of thing. And it just has a classy look as well. It also gives it a little bit of a reassuring heft as you use it. The weight itself comes in uh, 3.7 ounces. So obviously not a lightweight knife, but it feels solid. Slim to carry, very thin blade stock there. It's going to be a great slicer, and yet it doesn't feel like it's a shrinking violet that's just going to, you know, get scared away by a uh, like too thick piece of cardboard or something like that. Very very cool little design. All right, next up we've got uh, two new versions of the Real Steel Bushcraft Three. I have one of them here. Uh, there's a Coyote G10 with red liners version, and there's also this white G10 version right here. Very nice looking, $71.50 for these two. So it's fairly affordable and especially considering when these have a convex ground blade. Not something you see too often at such a low price, quite honestly. 
Convex coming straight down to zero. These feature a D2 steel blade right about that four inch mark, but I think it's just a hair over. Uh, so be careful if that's an important uh, legal measurement where you live. A little bit on the thicker side, probably like five thirty seconds of an inch or so right there. And just a stout feeling blade. It's going to be great for bushcraft, of course, doing feather sticks, splitting wood, but any kind of outdoor stuff, really. You hunter, got a nice blade shape for doing stuff like that and a pretty strong blade geometry. Just a camper, same thing. You got something that's going to work great for you. Ultralight hiker, eh, maybe you don't want this. This is a little bit on the heftier side, uh, six and a half ounces before you add in the sheath, but you would be getting a stout knife if you uh, went that route. The handles are the star of the show here for me, even though the like the convex blade is cool and all, especially at the price. But look at these handles, expertly shaped, they work great, they feel fantastic in the hand, they really lock in, they have enough thickness to them that long sessions of work aren't going to tire you out. It's got a nice pinch grip here at the front. It's comfortable if you need to get in towards the back to in order to do some drilling with the tip there. And then it's even got a really cool hidden lanyard spot at the back. I can't think of a single thing honestly I would do to improve this handle from a production standpoint. Maybe just you know easing over this corner at the side just a little bit just for honestly visuals con consistency, because you don't really feel it in the hand, you can just kind of see it, which, you know, maybe maybe I'd change that but so so cool. And the sheath is nicely done. It's kind of an undyed leather, which means you could go in, make that whatever shade you like, you could do some mods on that do some tooling if you wish, or you can just wear it as is and let it kind of patina naturally and kind of communicate your the story of your adventures together with that knife. This one's actually maybe a little bit loose. But if you wet formed that one, I think that would do, uh, do be a little bit better. This is probably a one off though I've you know, held a number of these over the years and they usually fit in there pretty darn perfectly. All right, next up, we have a new version of the Buck Onset, their uh, premium flipper they debuted last year at Blade Show. Uh, this new version is coming in at about 192 bucks. And the main difference I'd say between that or this and the uh, previous version is you've got a Cerakoted blade here, in addition to a different color uh, G10, of course. Uh, Cerakoted blade 3.3 inches s 45 VN. It's got a nice drop point shape with that full flat grind going to be a very effective blade overall. And one of the things I've I've always liked about this particular knife or appreciated about it anyway, is there's there's actually some buck visual DNA in this handle this curve on the underside, combined with the curve at the back of the handle remind me a bit of like the classic 110 in a way. Granted the uh, the handle or the uh, tail end of the handle goes at a different angle, as opposed to the uh, the stand or the classic 110, but it's there, you know, look for it. And you can see them leaning into their heritage a little bit. As for the kind of construction of the handle itself, it's fairly on the simpler side, I'd say there's uh, there's more complex American made stuff in this price range out there. But it is kept nice and simple in a way. G10 there on the front, just a simple slab and then stainless steel frame lock at the back. You do have that uh, stabilizing disc there as works more as an over travel stop kind of like the hinderer style there. With that, we've got a folded style pocket clip, but it is uh, offset from the body using those standoffs there rather than folding towards the scale itself or handle itself non reversible clip in this case. But it's got a good orientation of the blade, it's going to be an effective user knife right there locks up nicely, flips nicely too. this is a ball bearing flipper. So if you've got a history of uh, maybe you weren't a fan of the buck vantage series, you thought they didn't flip well, maybe you weren't a fan of the buck sprint series, you wished it were crisper. This is going to be exactly what you want. I mean, it has got there's there's not a single thing or a single complaint I have about the flipping action of that knife right there. Check it out. All right, next up, we have a new RMJ Corbin Karambit. This is part of their 3V Syndicate series. $350 for this, about a three inch blade in that nice tough 3V steel, which we love. It's got a really cool bronze Cerakoted finish. It's at the same time, dull and non reflective. And yet, 
when you move it around in the light, there's a pretty cool shimmer going on. Gives it some visual interest, gives it some flair without it being, you know, this bright reflective thing that is antithetical to the uh, kind of covert mindset of a knife like this in general. Pretty cool. Carbon fibers for the handles. Carbon fibers? All the fibers. It has all the carbon fibers for the handle. Carbon fiber for the handles. Bolted on. Feels good. If you've got larger hands, you folks know mine are slightly larger than average. It still fits in here or still fits in my hand quite nicely. I really like the kind of jimping they have here at the back where your thumb would sit. It makes it very easy to manipulate. You're not gonna be slipping off of there at all. Very nice. Wicked, wicked edge on that blade. We have a sheath over here somewhere, I would imagine. Hey, thank you, Thomas, for pointing that out. It is Kydex and it has the 3B Syndicate logo here on the back which you can see. Uh, it's got a cool uh, presentation box and some uh, some cool paperwork as well, like wax sealed stamp and everything. So I'd, I didn't open that. I didn't want to spoil that for whoever uh, buys this knife eventually. But what I really like functionally about their belt attachment system here is it's made out of leather and you don't even have to move things around in order to carry it either horizontally or vertically. Although with a thing like this, which one's horizontal? That would be horizontal probably. Like it's, it's curved almost to a 90 degree. So like, would that be horizontal? Cause the blade's horizontal. There's just no cardinal directions on this one. But you can carry it any one of four ways. What do they call the points of the, the compass? The, the rose. You could get four of them and have a pinwheel. The compass rose. All right, let's stop being silly. This is a seriously awesome knife. And I'm not even making a joke about that. This is a really awesome knife, but I really love that belt attachment. It's a, an elegant and simple solution to, you know, achieving modularity without needing something like a tech lock, which I love that. Very, very cool, very cool knife. All right, next up, speaking of cool, coolly finished tactical things, which that Corbin was, check out this limited edition Hogue EXT-01. Let's, let's seriously look at it. This is very cool. Uh, about 400 bucks for this, uh, limited in nature, as I mentioned. I love the handles and I love the, the finish on this steel. It's S7 tool steel, incredibly tough stuff, and it has a case hardened style finish on it. Look at that, it's so cool. It's almost like a flamed titanium finish in a way, but of course this is not titanium, so it has to be achieved in very different fashion. I really dig that. And the handles are Coca Bolo, and they've got that like gun stock diamond pattern checkering going on. Very, very cool. Also, even the little uh, little surrounds for the screws here have like that Ace of Spades look going on. But it's really cool to see all those little details like that on an otherwise just kind of modern tactical tomahawk. Like this is not like a classic, you know, wood furnitured shotgun or something like that. I dig it. It's got a nice swell here for your grip. The whole thing works great. The edge itself is wicked. And this will of course accept some of the, uh, the attachments that Hogue sells. If you wanted to put a spike or a hammer pole on the back of this, you could. The speaking of other cool sheath methods or scabbard methods, well, this is technically not a scabbard. You do have a, uh, a belt paddle here on the sheath, but the rest of it is magnetic. So that clips in and then twist that for a little extra retention. So even if it uh, gets knocked loose or it's gonna prevent it from getting knocked loose, knocked loose from the magnets. There we go. And you've got a matching piece of wood in this case. Gonna be very easy to slip that onto the belt. As you can see, you've got those little teeth there so it's not gonna slip out unintentionally. Reach down, grab it, click the little lever and you can pull that right off your belt quick as you please. This night there, this tomahawk is light, it's fast, and it looks simply fantastic. And last but not least, we have the Tor Knives Cardiff Filet Knife coming in at 250, made in a small shop here in the US. Pretty wild look there, nice up sweeping blade. Not really a lot of flex. If you need a flexible filet knife, this isn't gonna be what you need. I think this would make a great you know, larger game processing knife potentially. Cool barbecue knife as well. The handles are G10 and they are aggressively grooved. I mean, they're like almost sharp edges there. You're 
going to have a, a hard time losing your grip on this knife, quite honestly. I know, for me, I'd probably go in and kind of knock the edges off around, uh, not overall, but maybe just on the corners here. That make it a little more comfortable. I'd probably be wearing gloves uh, with this one in this case. Make it more comfortable for you and you're still going to get the retention you need. Uh, CPM 154 blade, eight inches long, Cerakoted finish here too, I believe. No, this is actually a gun coat finish. So it's a, uh, a different style. We had our uh, Sebenzes done in the uh, gun coat finish at one point here. So that was really cool to see. Great camp food prep knife too. You've got knuckle clearance. You could even do like some rocking stuff on a cutting board if you wanted to. Not going to be a chef knife replacement, but could do a lot with this particular knife. I like the sheath. It has got a faux leather look to the Kydex. You've got plenty of holes down there. And I haven't checked, but I would assume they made this uh, tech lock compatible. Yes, indeed they have. So you can attach it to a belt if you want, but filet knife is probably gonna be stored in the cooler, in the tackle box, or in the, uh, the camp box. But it's good to have that option. There you go. All right, that's all I have to show you this week. Make sure to let me know what you thought down in the comments and to get your hands on any of these blades, knives, or tomahawks. Check out the links in the description that'll take you over to knifecenter.com. Don't forget about our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're gonna buy one of these knives today, wouldn't you like to earn some free money to spend on your next one? I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, and that's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.